It is, uh, it is an honor. I've got a couple of announcements, actually, I'd like to make. Um, first and foremost, I know uh, Brad Sherman's here. His opponent, Mark Reed, is also here. And so, so what we're going to do is we're going to set Brad up on the end of this stage. And, no, Mark, actually, you left your lights on. And uh, so you might want to go check your car. Um, I actually want to take a moment, if I could, and it's not a polit political dinner at all, but I got the benefit of having the microphone and uh, make an announcement that's critically important. We have an election coming up. And how many of you here actually are registered to vote? Now keep your hands up. How many of you actually vote? Okay, if that's accurate, that's everybody in the entire city of Los Angeles. Have you seen the voter turnouts? And Lee Alpert, I know they don't let you vote. There are laws against that. Um, having said that, it is an honor and a privilege uh, to be amongst somebody of such distinguished character and ethics and moral and honesty, somebody who's going to drive the sheriff's office in the right direction. And uh, he was announced earlier, but now he's here with his lovely wife, Kathy. If you can please put your hands together for our dear friend, Jim McDonald. Make sure you get out and vote. Don't take anything for granted. We love you, Jim. Thank you. With that, bringing back up to the stage, actually, for those of you that didn't know, the characters that were up here earlier tonight, it is Fright Night here at Universal Studios. And we had a couple people that were not on the agenda that made their way somehow into our festivities. Um, I thought I was having a flashback of Van Halen when I saw that guy come back up on stage. And I wasn't sure um, if he had the hat on, Slash maybe, not sure. But um, in any event, you actually have to hear these resumes. They're phenomenal. This year, we are pleased to have, and, and, and by the way, of course, Nancy Cartwright's close friends and colleagues. From the world of voice acting, we'll provide some entertainment again for the evening. You may not know their names, but you've heard their voices, not just tonight, but in a multitude of cartoons, video games, radio and television and sports. Emmy Award winning Rob Paulson has voiced hundreds of familiar characters and likes to jest, I'm getting paid to do what I got in trouble to do in the seventh grade. Or better yet, what Dennis Zine did on the city council. And Jess Harnell, a Variety Magazine top 10 voice talent, who has been in just about every animated television series ever done, announcing in countless popular primetime series and also one of the top voice matches, speaking and singing as Elvis, Willie Nelson, Christopher Walken, and mimicking a total of over 150 voices. The last voice he is struggling with, he's having a very difficult time with, is our city controller, Ron Galperin. But he will get there, I assure you. Let's put our hands together and welcome them back up to the stage. So can I just say, were those the best cheeseburgers you guys ever had in your life? I mean, that was amazing, wasn't it? Thank you very much. I, I, yeah. I won. This is my dessert. Yeah, for singing the countries of the world. Can you believe he did that? I just he, made... he wrote that in the car while he was in traffic coming yeah. up the hill. That was good, Rob. Very I nice. Had a, I actually had a young lady once. We, we premiered. That was a shot from a show called uh, Animaniacs, yes, a Steven right. Spielberg show years ago. That, yep. uh, I, I, there's a, oh, thank oh you. hey, thank you out there. Thank Animaniacs. You. There is a, thank you, Mrs. Spielberg. Yeah, Mrs. Spielberg. Um, we owe you one. There actually was a, a, an interesting story about that at Comic-Con, who many of you may, may know, this giant marketing tool that happens in San Diego every year. When that show was premiered, they showed uh, that particular cartoon with my character, Yakko, yeah, who sings right. all the countries of the world. And that's the young right. lady in the front row who was dressed kind of as Patti LaBelle as a Klingon. That was me, actually, right? Yeah, well, strange, it, yeah. by the way, I just found Amelia Earhart is in here. So is Emilio Estevez. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> in any case, a young lady asked, did you... Did you improvise that song? 
And I said, I'm good, but I'm not that, not that good. And I wish I could stay and take more questions, but I'm going to improvise a song about everybody who's ever played Major League Baseball <laughs> in alphabetical order. But um, that's anyway. An, that's an accomplishment, Ralph. Yeah. That is an accomplishment. But, you know, I got to tell you, buddy, that yeah. dessert is even better when you win it off a good friend like you. Well, so everything you. is even better when you win it off a good friend, Rob. But, you know, I was looking at the uh, Fernando Award website on my iPhone during yeah, the, uh, the dinner thing. Cool. And did you know that the Fernando Award is actually older than I am? Really? Yeah, I swear it is. I, I don't know that there's anybody who's I don't, older than I. No, Moses is older than you. Oh, in fact, you know, I was the entertainment at the Last Supper. You were? I was. What happened there, man? I was Shecky of Arimathea. That's good. I like that for yeah. you. You should still run with it. Oh, Jesus, what a party. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> you know, but, but, but the award thing, man, that started in 1959. That's what I'm saying here. It's yeah, well, at least one of us remembers 1959. I, I, actually, I actually do. Do you really? Yeah. You were probably like watching, uh, what, like Captain Kangaroo. I was. In those days, were you? I lo and That's you know, nice. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's an interesting bit of trivia. Mr. Green Jeans. Yeah, I remember him. Do you know what his real name was? Roger. No. Okay, what was it? Does anybody know? No. no, no, the real name. Lumpy Branham. No. Yeah. That's so, not on his driver's yeah, license. Mr. and Mrs. Branham chose to name their child Lumpy. They were nuts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We're going to Captain Kangaroo. What was the top show in 1959? Do you remember? Oh, I do. Dun, 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 Bonanza. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I love TV theme <laughs> songs, too. man. That's good stuff, and right? And Twilight Zone. Submitted for your approval. The Fernando Awards, 56th edition. Nice. Yeah, man, good stuff. That's pretty right? good. Good and stuff. Yeah. You know, remember the Jack Benny had his own program. Yeah, you know what I like about the Jack Benny program is that Elvis was on the Jack Benny. Well, program. the year I was born, 1956. That's right. The number one song in the country was Hound Dog. Yeah, and he showed up on the uh, the Jack Benny show. You're a little Elvis. Well, it's just like, uh, hey, here, there, Mr. Benny, I, I got one question for you, man, and it's, Are you lonesome tonight? It's pretty good, right? Yeah, it's all right. It's pretty good. Yeah. I do that. I get Good to do that shows. every day at work. I get to see that. Yeah. We're not singing this, so go on. We don't yeah. know how this goes. Yeah. Just keep the time. Yeah, keep going. We're not There's a do song, that song in here we've never heard of, and we don't want to embarrass ourselves yeah. more so than we already have. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff, keep, roll that up. Roll that up a little bit. Hello? Jeff, quit. <laughs> <laughs> here, I'll say there, it. So, can it be the trees? There you yeah, go. Keep blue. going, man. Keep it going. Yeah, I don't we know decided, that song. We didn't know that song. Yeah, yeah. Now go on. Now you were born in 19. I was born in the year two, but it says 1963 on my driver's license. Oh, that would be. Yeah, Andy Griffith. Right, I'm doing a little Thelma Lou and get some pie. Very nice, but what about this one? Now listen to a story about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer barely kept his family fit. That's right, that's right. Oh, and even better, dude, a classic. You guys remember this one? Because they're cousins. Identical cousins all the way. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. That's all well and good, but how does this identical cousin thing happen? That's just weird. Genetic disorder. That's like that's like that whole uh, you know stem cell research thing in action, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Oh, and you know what the best show was from back then, though? Ed Sullivan. Ed I Sullivan. remember the Beatles. 19, I re, okay, this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is good. Jess is the definitive archetypal Beatle fan, but he. Yeah. Like he, he's Beatles. going to truncate. You guys like the Beatles? Do we have any Beatles fans like here tonight? Okay, right. Come on, you got to like the okay. Beatles, right? Yeah. Watch this. Jess can give you a clear delineation between each Beatle. Go ahead. Well, you know what's really funny is when I first started doing impressions when I was a little kid, the first thing I learned to do was the Beatles because everybody thinks they all sounded the same because they're from the same town, which would mean that everybody in the valley would be like, hey, man, what's going on? So it's totally not true. The Beatles, this is the all four Beatles voices very quickly. I'll teach you how to do it, okay? John, you got to put his voice through your nose, you know. Yeah, there's very sharp sort of tone when he talked and it was like a little arrow coming out of his nose. Paul's voice was more like back in his throat, see? And a little bit higher pitched than John's was. And then George always sounded like he had a cold and was very congested and slow when he talked. And then he had Ringo down here at the bottom, so they're all four very different, aren't they? See, that's the Beatles. Yeah, it is. Buddy Jesse. I get paid for doing that, folks. Right. And then, Rob, after that, we had the 1970s, Yeah, man. now we're talking about a decade that you either can't remember or you cannot forget. Or in your case, it's both, really, right? Yeah. From the things you told me. What about this song? You guys know this one. The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. That's the way we became the Brady Bunch. Right, right, right. Totally. What else you got? Um... Oh, Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, yeah, Mary Tyler Moore. Uh, 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 love is all around. Why don't you take it? You can have the town. Why don't you take it again? You're gonna make it after all. That's a great that song, song, man. There is, that's yeah. a great song. That's a great song. And then there were no slouches, really, all through the 1980s. Oh, in right? the 80s, there were so many great shows, dude. There were so oh! many. Check this out. Cosby Show. 
Bill Cosby, man, let me tell you something. There was an episode of The Cosby Show, ladies and gentlemen, that never aired. People don't know about this, where Bill got a job as a waiter at the Fernando Awards, and he served everybody a giant bowl of jello pudding. You know what I'm saying. Ha, ha, ha. That's right. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> yeah. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, well, probably the top show of the decade, though, was The Golden Girls, and Rob slept with all four of them, which well, was great, right? No, I actually fell asleep with all of them. Yeah, you fell asleep with I all of them. I, got, I tell you, I have a huge crush on Betty White. I Who love doesn't, her. man? Everybody does. I adore does. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now the 80s, uh, yesterday in a show. Yeah. That is still doing new episodes. Okay, I know this one. I know this one. It's got to be uh, Larry King Live. <laughs> no. No? No, thank you. No. Thank goodness. No. Um, our friend Nancy Cartwright yeah. is Bart Simpson, The Simpsons. I thought it was O.J. Simpson. She's no, no, a, no, no, no. No, she's Bart Simpson. She's oh, that's, Bart. that's probably better. And that, that leads us into the 90s, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what happened then? Uh, Okay, things changed a bit in the night. Yeah, I know that. Like with what show? Um, what's, what show? What's the show from the night? Friends. Nine? Oh, you guys remember this one? Well, no one told you life was going to be this way. There you go. You got to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, yeah. now there's desserts flying Exactly. Over. And animation had a very big decade, Rob. Totally. You know, with uh, like uh, Rugrats and Ren and Snippy in our show, Animaniacs. Animaniacs. Where we said, hello, hello nurse. nurse. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. There was a lot of And Pinky in the Brain. Yeah, he was both. He, he was, was, he, he was Yakko, my brother, and Pinky the Mouse. So you got paid for being schizophrenic. Basically. Yeah. I understand, totally. right? Yeah. And then, of course, we had Beverly Hills uh, 90210. Yeah, but you had to be a girl to watch that. I wasn't really... I guess. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And that leads us to the 21st happen. century, Rob. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we've gone from yeah. Captain Kangaroo to right? CSI to crime scene investigation. Yeah, from shows that you could watch with your kids at a TV dinner to shows you can't even watch while you're having dinner, right? Yeah, enjoy yeah. that dessert. Natural folks. progression of things. But great stuff. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. The 20, 24, The yeah. Good Wife, Big Bang Theory. And, and the, the Simpsons. Simpsons. Hi, Nancy. The longest. Yeah running scripted show in the history of television. It's a cartoon, That's folks. That's right. How, How about, about that? that? And, and starring none other than the uh, our, our Fernando Award winner herself, Nancy Cartwright. Who's not very tall, but she is mighty, folks. That's you know? right. Yep, yep. We love our Nancy. Yep. Um, so what's your favorite? Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, favorite theme song. Yeah. It's got to be this one. Now, look, you guys, if you know this song, then then sing along because we're here to party a little bit, right? So let's let's uh, remember this one. It went to uh, making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to get away? Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Da, 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 da. And they're always glad you came. Ba, ba, ba. You want to go where... Nice. I don't even know the words. Everybody, Everybody knows your, your name, name, Fernando. You got to put him in there, dude. Yeah, yeah once again, you. once again. Yeah. Come on. Thank you, That's folks. Good. Thank you very much, you guys. I, I think that pretty much takes us all the way up to... Our host. Our host. Yeah, because he should be on television. So please welcome back our MC, Mitch, Mitch Englander. Englander. Come on, Thanks, Mitch. Folks. Get up here, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, folks. All right, let's give Weird Al another round of applause. Does he look a little bit like Weird Al Yankovic? All right. Jess, Rob, thank you so much. This was actually, um, that was an advertisement for Howl at the Moon. For those of you who haven't been to the dueling piano bar right down the street, the only way we get this room for free is we've got to bring in our professional talent and then they work for their food. This is our way of giving back to the homeless. So thank you for coming off the streets. We really appreciate it. You clean up well. We'll get your haircut tomorrow. Thank you so much. So with that, also um, one last commercial introduction. That is, um, I'd like to invite all of you on November 8th at 4 o'clock p.m., to um, Steve Fazio's house, Nicole's making short ribs. No, it's the, uh, the Museum of the San Fernando Valley grand opening. We're actually gonna have our own museum in the San Fernando Valley, which is awesome and spectacular. It's gonna be at Parthenia and Wilbur, so everybody's invited. Scott Sterling is gonna be out there cooking and barbecuing, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we encourage everybody to come by for that as well. Um, so, the, keep, keeping on your theme here, I'll just ask a couple questions before we jump into the festivities, the final festi festivities of the night. What was the name of the monster in the movie Frankenstein? Anybody? Anybody? Gary? The name of the monster in the movie Frankenstein. Frankenstein. 
Monster. The answer was Monster. The doctor's name was Frankenstein. Very good. The homeless guy that looks like Weird Al gets the answer. Fantastic. All right. Yes, it was Monster. And, uh, and one last question. How many, which, here's a better one. Which month has 28 days in it? All of them. Okay. So with that, we're going to go ahead and bring up Dennis Watsabal. Matsabal? What you may call it? Yes, that works for our president's message. Let's put our round of applause together, our hands together, and welcome. All kidding aside, this guy's fantastic, Dennis Watsabal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch. And thank all of you for being here this evening as we honor our nominees and this year's recipient of the Fernando. Our award is about volunteerism, and I want to thank our current board members who work tirelessly to improve our organization and better enable it to achieve our mission. Here is the board of directors. Rayford Johnson, Vice President. Joel Simon, Secretary. Bruce Miller, Treasurer. Then we have Dana Bar Bartholomew, Nancy Cartwright, Mary Lou Chang, David Honda, Marion Joes, Richard Layden, Rona Lubash, Tom Oliver, George Perez, Art Pfefferman, Gloria Pollock, Deborah Sable, Tom Sule, Gary Thomas, MC Townsend, and Patty Jo Wolfson. Would all of you stand up and then would everybody give them a round of applause, please? <clears throat> Fernando is unlike any other nonprofit organization in the Valley. Our sole purpose each year is to identify individuals who amplify our mission, which is to annually salute that outstanding citizen who personifies lifetime community involvement, service, and volunteerism. The nine individuals who are nominated this year are true winners because they are givers. They represent the thousands of hardworking individuals who donate their time, talent, and treasure on behalf of our community. And we need more diligent champions in our world, an ongoing generation of youth who follow the path so clearly laid out by our nominees and recipients. This e evening simplifies the beginning of a five-year plan we have put together for the Fernando Awards. We are taking our message out to inspire a new generation of philanthropy. Of course, this can't be done without our benefactors and patrons, patrons who each year see the value in giving and more importantly, lending their expertise and time. Again, thank you all. At this time, I would like to bring to our stage Congressman Brad Sherman, and our 2011 Fernando Award recipient, Gary Thomas. So unfortunately, our uh, recipient from last year, Nancy Cartwright, couldn't be here with us in person, but she didn't want to miss this event. So here's Nancy. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much, and good evening, everyone. I just wanted to say that I really wish that I could be there with you tonight, but I happen to be across the pond near London, and I'm hosting another charity event. Now listen, if I could be two places at one time, tonight is the night that I really wish that I could do that. I was so impressed with this setup, and I want to thank several people for doing this. But first of all, I want to give a round of applause to the 2014 nominees and and our future recipient. Congratulations in advance. I'd also like to thank the entire Fernando board for all their help and support in putting this together originally, especially to Deborah Sable, David Honda, and Peter Chenis, who have all worked tirelessly. Kudos to the foundation for creating the next generation of nominees. My goodness, look what we've got going. 
And the other thing is I really wish I knew who the recipient is. I have no idea. It is such a well-kept secret. So when that envelope is opened in just another minute, we are all going to find out for the first time who our 2014 recipient is. So have a fantastic evening. Love you all. Cheers to the Fernando team. Over to you, Gary, Congressman Sherman, and Mitch. Have a nice night. Am I supposed to? Ah, uh, supposed to identify the nominees. If I can have just one, I just do want to introduce Matt Fiasia of my staff. Imagine a federal agency makes a mistake. It could happen. You call Matt, he works very hard, he solves your problem, and then I, Brad Sherman, take the credit. <laughs> Pretty good system. It's a great system. And now, our first nominee is Martin Cooper. Literacy is not only of interest and importance to me, it's paramount for our future. And taking young children from the Boys and Girls Club of the West Valley to buy their own books because we've raised enough money to have more than 200 children each year attend is really what my passion is because I care that young people care about, learn from, and love reading as they grow because that will help them become productive people in our society who are making this a better valley for everyone. Next nominee, Mr. Paul Davis. One Generation has inspired me because of what they do for seniors as well as children. They've got adult daycare and daycare for children, and they let the two merge in a way that's magical, almost. And if you go on a tour of the facility and you see the scope of the things they're doing and how many people they touch and affect every day of the week, it's just amazing and can't help but feel I want to help them in some way shape or form. is Susan Dubrin. I am on the board of directors of the Child Development Institute, which is a group of people that, a nonprofit that works with children with learning differences in the autism spectrum. It's very important to me because over the years I have worked with a lot of people that have disabilities. And unless you get the early intervention that you need, uh, your life can be very difficult. Uh, so as a result, um, I, for years, taught or gave um, support groups, ran support groups to uh, facilitate uh, parents understanding what their children's disabilities were and how it could better assist the families.
introduce our next nominee, Mr. Steve Fazio. Public safety is probably the most important thing, you know, as we think about our lives here living in the San Fernando Valley, bringing children up and families and, you know, wanting to make sure that we have a safe place uh, that has a good fire department, that has a good police department, that our city's working. Um, early on, I became a reserve with LAPD, did that for 30 years, was asked by the mayor if I'd serve on the fire commission, which I've thoroughly enjoyed, and both under the umbrella of public safety. Again, I think there's no more important mission than those who are out there doing our first responder kinds of activities. I do what I do because I have three healthy children and I've tried to explain to them how important community service is and they've done miraculous, miraculous events. And every day when I come home, I say to myself, by the grace of God, there goes I. Because at the end, it's not what you've accumulated, but it's your good deeds and you can only hope that they outweigh the bad or the missed opportunities you've had in life. Please welcome our next nominee, Mr. John Higginson. Therapeutic riding is a modality that works for so many different populations. The veterans returning from Iraq and Iran with the PTSD and TBI, with special needs children, challenged with different disabilities, cerebral palsy, autism, and, and people that are challenged with alcohol and drugs, addiction. So it changed my life and I'm committed to it. And, um, and I see the difference it makes in everyone's life that comes to us, the different populations that we work with daily. And let's bring up our next nominee, Emily Manansala Roberts. I'm committed about learning multiculturalism, especially in the San Fernando Valley, and spread it and, and let everybody know about the importance of knowing different cultures and um, letting them know that this is important, especially Los Angeles, California is a melting pot. Sean McCarthy, even though... <laughs> the jobless seminars that I uh, work with are, are given to anywhere from 10 to 15 people at a time. I've offered them through St. Bernadine's Church over on uh, Valley Circle, uh, through the Chamber of Commerce and through a number of other organizations. I go through a, a complete uh, package as to what they would need to do when they go on interviews. These have been particularly hard times uh, for people. We're still seeing large numbers of people out of work. Uh, we do what we can to help them to get jobs as quickly as we can. Certainly not least, Mel Wilson. You know, I love Pacoima. I refer to it as beautiful downtown Pacoima. It had a bad rap, and I wanted to change it. I thought the people in Pacoima were worth fighting for. So I put together a lot of good work on my uh, behalf, but also encouraged volunteers, hundreds of volunteers to get together to change the dynamics. Now Pacoima is a, is a business hub, a distribution hub, a place where good jobs are at, and I, I think it's a great place to live.
we're about to announce the winner for this year. Let's give another round of applause to all of our finalists. And so for one final time, let's bring up Jess and Robbie back up here. Thank you for bringing with us, ladies and gentlemen. Are you guys still having fun tonight or what? You still out there? Good, because this is it. This is the moment that we have all been waiting for, Rob, yeah. right now. And the Oscar goes to... No, no, no. This is sorry. Fernando. Much, much more important. I'm sorry. I got carried away. You always do. They're Bad nervous enough, Rob. You know, we got to help these people here. I know. They're very you know. sweet. Um, we, we are going to help out, help them out. Yeah, right? yeah, right now, because if your name is called, though, listen, don't do these things. we got some rules for you. It's going to be very helpful, so listen if you're nominated. So go far, ahead. so good. Nobody's yeah. tripped coming up the stairs. Yeah, Night's not over yet. Don't pull don't a man do Hathaway. That. Don't do that, right. right? Don't forget which pocket you put your speech in. And, and listen, guys, seriously, don't say that thing about I had no idea I would get this because you were nominated, yeah. so you knew you had a pretty good chance. Right. You, yeah, totally. You can't use that. Yeah. Don't forget to give props to your fellow nominees. Yeah, yeah, and the right. MC and the guy with all the hair. Yeah, the guy with all the hair. And most importantly, don't forget to thank your spouse or you will not have one and you'll be writing checks. Yeah, the and then you're going to be sleeping on the couch like me. You don't want to do that, trust yeah. me. Yeah. So thank you, you folks, honestly. Yeah, thank you so much for having us at your party, really by the way. Sweet. We totally appreciate it. Thank you. Because if it wasn't much. this, we were going to be in the Horror Nights thing and the food was better here. Yeah. But please welcome back right now, ladies and gentlemen, our MC did a great job. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch come on up here. Come on, Mitch. Come on back up. Where are you, buddy? I know he's here someplace. He's not running around in a zombie costume or anything. Come on, Mitch. Get so, Assembly Member Matt Dabovne to the stage along with Peter Satyuloff and Mike Mendelson. Mendelson? Mendelson, I'm sorry about that. And uh, if we can have them back up onto the stage as well. Matt left. Matt was the one with the envelope in his frickin' pocket. Seriously? All right. All right, well, so we're gonna call you up, Peter, and you've got, I believe that you have the, uh, the envelopes as well. He left it at his home. So we're supposed to congratulate the nine nominees again, so we just, they did that for us. And uh, Congressman Sherman asked for the envelope, and then Gary opens it and they announce the recipient, which is actually printed here. How does it, why is it in my script if it's in the envelope? So this has been sealed since it left the CPA firm, is that correct? All right. Does, did any, does anybody remember that Carson episode? All right. I'm gonna point out that the winner will also get a flag that flew over the Capitol, but only only on the condition that they bring it to next year's dinner for the Pledge of Allegiance. And so now, here it is, Mr. Martin Cooper. <laughs> I don't have a speech to pull out of my pocket because I didn't write one. I was struck by the fact, though, for some of you, uh, you know that for 10 years I was in charge of public relations for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And as such, I often had a chance to talk to Oscar winners after they walked off stage with their eight and a half pound statue. And the one thing that they all said when they were asked, what does this mean to you? What they really wanted to say was, I'm gonna get more money for my next picture, but they never said that. What they really said was, and, and I think they meant it, was there's no greater honor than to be recognized for what you do by your peers. 
And I think that's the beauty of this particular award. All of you are my peers, the business community of the San Fernando Valley. So I thank you for honoring me and recognizing me. And I thank all of the honorees who stood at their marks across the stage, the, the nine of us or eight of us this evening, <clears throat> who uh, have all done so much for the community. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I appreciate the recognition. But more than that, I appreciate the opportunity to say to all of you that the work you do is important and it's often unrecognized. Uh, could we put the lights up for just a minute? I'd like to see the audience. Can you put the audience lights up for me? How many of you serve on boards of directors of nonprofit organizations? Please raise your hands. Would you all give those folks a hand? But just as important are those who are ignored, the people who actually run these organizations, whether they're presidents or executive directors, whatever they're called, they're the ones who have to put up with all of us who are on the board of directors, who show up once a month, pretend we've read the financials, and make very sage comments about what's in there. And they sit there and they put up with all of that. And they're the ones who have to go out there, work the room, raise the money, provide the services for the people. So would you please give a big hand of applause to all the people who run all of our nonprofits. And, and like all of you, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my spouse, because she lets me out at night, and she lets me go to 8 o'clock meetings. And she supports me in all of the ways that are important to all of us who are supported in what we do. Some of you know that uh, my particular interest is Winston Churchill. And my favorite Winston Churchill quote is as follows. You make a living by what you get. You make a life by what you give. So those of you who haven't been doing so, get out there and get a life. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Marty. I have the pleasure of working with Marty on the Boys and Girls Club board, and I know, don't know anybody that works so hard. Marty, we have some gifts for you. First of all, here's your statue. <laughs> and um, as a member of this little group, you get to wear this distinguished lapel pin, and I'm going to give you mine. You got to use one. <laughs> I want the new model. Anyways, another round of applause for our 2014 56th annual recipient, Mr. Marty Cooper. I want to thank our gracious host here tonight, Mitchell Englander, and for all of you for coming and bearing the traffic. And have a great night and good night. We'll see you next year.